Welcome to episode 91 of Talking Mopars. As we approach episode 100, it's really starting to sink in that I am one episode closer to my goal of 100 episodes and 100,000 downloads. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Thank you to everyone who has been here with me from the beginning, and to those of you who discovered the show along the way and decided to stick around, thank you. It was so hard for me to see this far ahead back when I started the show, and I can absolutely say, without a shadow of a doubt, that without the tremendous amount of support I received from the Mopar community, this wouldn't be as fun for me. <laughs> so thank you. Your encouragement drives me to keep pumping out these shows and to keep trying new things and to basically develop the show into something that the Mopar community can embrace as a whole. So again, thank you. To those of you new to the show, you've missed a lot, and I do encourage you to go back and listen to the back catalog of episodes. It's been a really fun journey so far with some laughs, some mistakes, and some really fun guests. But strap yourself in because we've only just begun. You got here just in time. This episode is part three of the latest Facebook live stream replay from the night of Friday, June 11th, and picks up where we left off last week for part two. So without further ado, if you are a Mopar enthusiast, then you are in the right place. Don't go anywhere. You're tuned into the best Mopar enthusiast-driven podcast on planet Earth, and I'm your host, Chris Albrecht, better known as the Mopar Hunter, and this is Talking Mopars. You're listening to Talking Mopars with the Mopar Hunter, your direct connection to all things Mopar. Irvin is in the house. Irvin, what's up, buddy? Welcome back. How's it going, brother? It's going good, man. What's up? I saw I saw you have a little AutoZone story. I thought that was pretty funny. I was going to read it, but I was like, oh, he's jumping in the chat. We'll have him tell the story. So what's up with your AutoZone story? No, no. <laughs> Honestly, I applied maybe, what, uh, three days ago? Yeah. And it, it, it's just... I don't know. It, to be honest with you, I I applied just because I needed the extra money or whatever. But I I sure. always go to the local AutoZone here. Mm -hmm. There's I want to say maybe it's like there's four AutoZones in here in this city. Wow. wow. Really? Yeah. There's four. I can pretty much tell you exactly where what street they are in. <laughs> um. Yeah, I always go to the local one. It's like maybe I want to say a few minutes away from here. I want to say are they are they there. are they all pretty good or what? You got knowledgeable people in there? No. <laughs> no. No. all right you walk in and there's nothing but i want to say maybe like high schoolers okay it's uh definitely a young young uh young young people dude they, they just you know they're, they're there because they probably Lots just wanna, yeah I mean, they, they just need to make that money you know i go in there, there and you have, you know, very often you have them like having to ask other people like, hey, um, um, like, you know, oh, what is he talking about or whatever. Da, da, da. <laughs> and then the, the lines are ridiculous, dude. Like, you, I think you just mentioned earlier, as soon as you walk in the store and you see that line, you're just like, oh, all right. <laughs> Out of here. And they close at 11 here. Really? Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> they close at 11 here, so it's different. It's wow. Late. Um, yeah, that's what I said. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm looking for a part-time job. I'm, I'll get off here. I start at five, get off at 11, you know, six hours a day during the week or, you know, all day, Saturday, Sunday. So it's a good uh, part-time job or whatever. But it's weird. It's a funny story because when I went to go apply at AutoZone um, two, two or three years ago for a part-time uh, gig, um, the hiring manager was out of all on vacation, actually. And... I applied. The guy, the guy that was doing the hiring, he liked me. He offered me a position, so I, I uh, got, um, I got an offer to, you know, work there. And I was just like, all right, cool, I take it. And he goes, all right, you'll get a, a call from our, our original hiring manager when she gets back from vacation. She never, she never called me back. So I gave up at that point. I was like, oh, great, I'm not gonna get the job. And then um, recently, th um, recently things changed and i wanted to apply so i applied and then sure enough the hiring manager right now at that store that same store that i applied a few years ago i know him from high school oh wow that <laughs> works I for say? you yeah he knows me from high school oh, okay 
I could not recognize him because of the mask. So oh, I, sure. I, I I couldn't really tell um or not. But sure enough, he, he was at, he was telling me like, oh, so what do you do? I submitted my resume, checked my resume. He's like, why the heck do you want to work here? <laughs> he just like, well, why do you want to work here? You're a mechanic. Like you work, you're a mechanic full time. Why do you want to work here? And I told him like, I I'm not even gonna lie. I told him straight up, I'm like, dude, you're understaffed, and no one here knows shit about cars. <laughs> he, uh, he just he tossed his head back he laughed and he said what when, when are you available and i was just like all right i'm uh, in <laughs> that is funny that's awesome oh, yeah dude i was just like all right i guess i'm working out of zone <laughs> nice. i'm super judgmental when i go to park stores this is the first thing i do is i look in the yeah. parking lot i look in the parking lot and see what they're driving and you know what 90 percent of the time there's at least one shit box K5, one shit box Jeep Cherokee, <laughs> you know what I mean? And at least an import of some kind. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this is going to be interesting shit. <laughs> but uh, I, I get that's just me being judgmental because some of the stores I've gone in, I, I'm talking to the guy and I'm like, this guy knows a lot of shit about cars. And I look out in the parking lot and I'm like, which one of those shit boxes do you drive? <laughs> like, what, what is happening here? Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. That's just that's just how I how I roll. Except for I have noticed this is this is gonna I'm gonna sound like a jerk, and I hope the guy doesn't listen to this podcast because I, I he goes, uh, do you have an account with us or like a discount or whatever they do? You know what I mean, like a, the rewards thing. And I was like, yeah, I put in I put in my fo- uh, gave him my phone number, and he pulled it for some reason. He's like, he says my name, and I'm like, yeah. And he goes, he says Chris at talkingmopars.com, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh, talking mopars, huh? And I'm like, yeah, you know, and I'm kind of like, all right, cool. Promotional moment here. And he proceeds to talk my ear off about shit I don't care about. And I'm like, okay, just be nice to him. I got shit to do. This is a a parts run that I did between work and home when I had already told my wife, I'll be home in 20 minutes. (laughs) And I stop in here to get something really quick. And he's sitting there talking to me about his old Dodge truck. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. And uh, it... (laughs) I don't know how to stop the conversation without being rude. You know what I mean? Because I just wanted to go, just shut the fuck up and let me get out of here. You know what I mean? But I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool, man. Um, anyways, so I went in there to buy some spark plugs for the van and a fuel pump for the van. All right. He rings me up, brings me the spark plugs and it's chat and chat and chat. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Well, <laughs> got to go. And uh, he still hasn't brought me the fuel pump. He's like, all right, have a nice day and hands me our receipt. I'm like, fuel pump and he goes oh yeah i'm sorry and i was like yeah instead of telling me your life freaking story get my part dude (laughs) you know what i mean that's one reason why i was just letting him talk i'm like is he ever gonna go get this fucking fuel pump or what (laughs) because i'm too nice of a guy i'm too nice of a guy i'm not like the guy at autozone who saw me walk in and went fuck I should have, as soon as he started talking, I should have just went, fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he's probably listening to this show right now. Cause he yeah. asked me a little bit about talking Mopars and I was like, yeah, it's a podcast or whatever. After, after talking to him for seven fucking minutes, I was like, all right, I don't think I want this guy to hunt me down or anything. You know what I mean? And I, sure. you're going to, you're going to get big block spark plugs for your small block I assume, stand. I assume, he tried no, even worse. He's going to get B6 windshield wipers for it oh you guys are gonna love this you guys are gonna love this so he brings me the fuel pump and i'm like cool and i look at the receipt and i look at the part number on the box and it's fucking different so i go okay and i go hey man uh and just because i didn't want to like call him out in front of everybody because as he's talking to me there's a line building up behind us yeah so i'm looking like a jerk but i can tell these people are like oh this guy wants to get the fuck out of here you know what i mean and this kid's just talking and i go hey man um isn't the number on the box supposed to be the same on the receipt and he goes oh oh yeah <laughs> and i'm like yeah and dipshit and I, I looked behind me and i was like dude yeah, i don't know fuck <laughs> and, and you could tell that none of those guys were mopar guys so they were probably even more annoyed like these fucking mopar guys they just uh so if you're, you're listening listen- to this dude no hard feelings but for sure make sure you get the right parts if you're going to talk somebody's ear off okay <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, not that long ago, I got um, an employee discount on the AutoZone. And I don't even work there. <laughs> it, I, it, it's cr- it's crazy because that's pretty much what motivated me to uh, reapply. Because <laughs> I saw that they were really, you know, busy. The line was pretty long, almost to the door. 
especially with the whole you know COVID thing happening here in Southern California, social distancing. They're they only allow certain people in the store. You know, not certain people. I mean, like a certain amount of people. Sure. Mm. So um, I, I I'm I'm there. I'm trying to like you know hold it together. I'm being patient, and I can tell that everyone in the, in, in, uh, at the register when you're ordering parts and stuff they're having a hard time so i'm starting I'm, I'm starting to help them then there's people especially I, I speak spanish so people that are you know speaking spanish i'll try to translate as much as i can so i can keep the line moving <laughs> and, uh, there's this one gentleman who had an alternator who, who he needed to get it tested and for some reason one of the employees there didn't know how to mount it on the machine to get it tested so I was there because I needed to get my stuff to get tested as well. So I'm behind this guy and I'm trying to help him like, hey, uh, you sure you have the right hardware? You sure, you know, da 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 And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And he's trying to get manager out there to help him or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, cool. And then he's holding up the line. The line's still moving. There's other people busy. People are answering phones or whatever. And people start walking up and he starts like trying to multitask. He's trying to like get this um, alternator mounted on this uh, testing machine and he's trying to help somebody in line. And I decided to turn around and help the guy that's in line. Like, hey, what are you looking for? And, I'm, and he's like, oh, I'm looking. Uh, he said in Spanish, I'm looking for a radiator for a Ford Expedition. I was like, okay, hold on. I turned the screen from the computer to look at me and I got the mouse and I'm just looking at him. <laughs> hey, hold on. Because believe it or not, the computer screen shows exactly what you what you see if you would look the part up on the AutoZone website. Mm-hmm. So okay. you can click on whatever, search the make and model and year and everything. So I did all that. I'm just trying to give this guy a, a you know, pretty much a little boost so he can keep the line moving. And uh, sure enough, when it was my turn to get it, um, to get my stuff tested, my obviously my my alternate failed, and. Um, he gave me a little discount. I noticed it on my receipt because was when he rang me up and everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, cool. It's defective or whatever. I want to get a new one. Here's the core exchange. He he charged me um, or whatever, and he, I got my receipt and I saw that it was like a, a certain percentage. I got what fifty percent off, and I was just like, whoa, all right, fifty percent off. Yeah, that's a hell that's of a discount. Fifteen percent off. Oh, 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 all right. <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, shit, I need to learn some Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, and he even told me, like, hey. again. <laughs> he's like, you need to apply. He's like, you need to apply here. And I'm like, I did a couple years ago. You guys didn't freaking fire. I mean, uh, hire me. So I was like, there's your loss. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, but you're in you, now, right? Have you started or are you about to start no. or? I just got a call today. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah. Turn that place yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> up. What's up with the charger, dude? You're telling me you had some more issues with the charger. I know you had the the you dropped the valve last time we were talking. Yeah, uh, this week has been uh, a pretty bad week, actually. Um, it started uh, literally overheating, and at first I thought. Maybe the, the the reservoir cap was either not holding pressure right or whatever, so I replaced the cap. And then I, I bled the, the cooling system maybe like three times, and it kept overheating. And then I started getting a misfire in cylinder five. I replaced the spark plugs, so I replaced, uh, replaced the coil, and I'm still getting that misfire. And the over the misfire would come and go. The only reason why I, uh, I, uh, I, I actually didn't experience the misfire, but the only reason why I know there's a misfire in cylinder five is because the engine light. That's what it turned on. And then um, after it overheating, and it wouldn't overheat like, you know, ridiculously overheat. It would go over like, maybe like 200, 230 degrees. And that's when you started noticing that it's overheating just a bit. And um, while I'm driving, it would go back to normal temperature. But after airflow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, well, the misfire would come and go. The, well, the check engine light would turn off and then turn on, turn off and turn on. Okay. It didn't give me, you know, to, you know, and then it just kept getting worse. And the, uh, that was, this happened earlier in the week, and now it's starting to become worse. And now it's overheating all the time. And just, I want to say maybe on Wednesday, I realized the car was having a difficult starting. Like, as soon as I turned the key, 
it would yeah. seem like it, the engine was trying to turn over, uh, turn over, over, and it would stop on its tracks. And then I turn the key off, turn it back on, and the same thing on the third attempt, it would actually turn over and start and fire up. But the check engine light, the check engine light's still on. I checked the codes, and sure enough, it shot a, a code for a cam sensor, um, uh, uh, either shorted or, or something. So it's either something ca uh, camshaft related. So now I'm worried because I asked the group on Facebook on what what possibly could it be, and there was everyone was saying that oh your car's done, your camshaft is this, your da -da -da. I'm just like, dude, the car runs. You, I mean, what's really going on? Is there like um, um, the sensor is bad or what's going on? Because the car runs, the car runs, the car runs great. It wasn't until Thursday, well, well yesterday, that the car will not start at all and i checked the engine and sure enough it shot out all the coolant out of the coolant tank and there's water in my intake there's water in my uh oil and i'm just like wow great blown head uh blown head gasket because that's pretty much right i can only think of uh think of um uh, how else would uh water get into my oil because i checked the oil and yep sure enough it's milky and i'm just like yep <laughs> One of my head gaps is blue. Yeah. And I, as I, I'm, a, I'm assuming maybe that uh, misfire is related to that head gasket uh, being blown. I, yeah, it probably is. I mean, it's probably the water being in there. And that, it kind of makes sense, too. It might have been hydraulic on you when you go to start it. And if there's water in there, water doesn't right. want to compress like air. So it'll freaking stop the motor if you have too much in there. Yeah. Right. Maybe you know, maybe it wasn't so bad that it was like the whole cylinder filled with water, but there was enough in there to keep it from cranking over. And then you get that one hit, you get all that shit to shoot out of the exhaust, and then boom, fires up, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Because once you get fired up, it idles fine. There's no ticking. There's no knocking. So, you know, yeah. it's good. But it's the overheating. And now after seeing my intake and throttle body and stuff like that, well, like with water, and now my oil, I checked the oil, and sure enough, there's water in there as well. So I'm going to open her up tomorrow. I'm going to take the heads off. And uh, I already have parts coming in. I already got – and I'm, uh, while I'm at it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, change the timing um, chain because someone told me uh, that startup issue and that, uh, that it could possibly be a worn-out um, timing chain. From what I from what I'm been told, yeah, and I, but, I, 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 I didn't I didn't I haven't changed it, so I mean, might as well just change it just to just yeah. to be safe. You're gonna be in there, so why not, right? Might as well. Yeah, yeah just do it. Might as well. Well, and a, a telltale sign too is pull the plugs. Like if it's number five that was giving you the misfire, if you pull the plug out and it's like steam clean, like bright, yeah. looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you got water in that cylinder. So, yeah, I, I haven't seen her all day. Um, after uh, yesterday, I just set her to park her. I'm just, I'm just gonna open her up on Saturday. Um, That'll tell all. That, yeah, other than that, just open her up. Hope for the best. Um, as long as there's no ticking, there's no knocking. Um, yeah. I'm doing, you know, I'm just, I just want to see what exactly pinpoint exactly what's going on. I'm probably gonna just do a radiator flush. Um, because due to the uh, contaminated uh, coolant and um, hope for the best, man. Uh, it's just yeah. been frustrating this whole week, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Well, good luck, man. Hopefully it's just a head gasket, change the oil, change the water, or, you know, your coolant, and hopefully that does the trick. I mean, you're probably going to have to have the head resurfaced, right? They're aluminum, so mm. uh, I, I would at least check to make sure they're flat. You know, if you can get a big flat ruler to lay across it and just make sure it's not warped in any way. Exactly. I would also check your thermostat, too, make sure it's functioning yeah. properly. Yeah, that's yeah, enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look back and you know trace it back to the, the the possibilities of what started the whole thing. You know, so like if it started running hot, think of anything that could make that condition initiate. You know, so obviously a blown head gasket's the result of running hot. So, you know, if you fix the blown head gasket but you haven't 
fix the issue that was causing the vehicle to run hot, then you know you could be repeating the process again. So I would uh, check that out, make sure it's not like a, a sticking thermostat or maybe a water pump. If you pull the water pump off, check the veins, make sure it hasn't like deteriorated the, uh, the veins on the water pump, something that would limit circulation. So, you know, heat transfer at speed, if you have a slow trickle of volume, you know, passing through the coolant system, but you're going faster. So you're getting, you know, heat transfer. It's like a rate, you know, how many uh, BTUs, some people calculate it. But if you have, um, you know, no flow over the radiator, but you're circulating at full volume, it'll have the same effect. So just try to look at all those pieces of the puzzle, see why it's overheating from the get go. So it won't do it to you again. Yeah, check, check your fan too. I had a I had a Dodge Intrepid once, and I was cruising through town in traffic, wasn't really paying much attention. And then all of a sudden, I noticed the temperature, and it was just like, whoo! I mean, it was hot. I'm like, oh shit! So I'm like trying to, you know, bob and weave through traffic. I pull into a gas station. I jump out of the car with a quarter in hand to get water, so I could douse the radiator. And the fucking thing said out of service. And I'm like, oh, no. fuck. <laughs> I left, I left oh, the engine running. I literally turned around and then poof, freaking water everywhere, dump oh, all its no. wood. Like, oh. And I, on those cars that had the Mitsubishi motor, there's like a, it's like a, it's like a blow up. It's like got like a, I don't like a plate glued to the top of the thermostat housing. So if the pressure gets too high, it blows. <laughs> and you got to pull the whole plenum off to get this shit out. Oh, oh it was a pain oh, in the ass, no. man. It was like a burst disc or something? Yeah, I, I guess. It's like a plate. It, it was just like a plate that's glued on. I could see, like, it, it had kind of a normal thermostat housing on top. And then, like you were talking about, it had the heater tube go under the plenum towards the back of the engine. But to get to it, you had to pull the whole plenum and everything off of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went to Dodge. I ordered a new one. And I'm like, well, f fuck all that. I'm just going to pop that tube off and just change the front part that's got the new plate that's glued on. And luckily, the guy that sold me the part, he goes – whatever you do don't pop that off <laughs> because it's like sealed at the factory and you, if you try to get another one to seal he's like you'll never get it to seal again i'm like fuck so i had to wow. pull everything apart off the motor but <laughs> but what it ended up being was it had two fans on it and one of the fans went out and uh when i turned the fan by hand uh, you know, I, I don't know what made me look, but like one of the fans was fine. I go to turn the fan on the or the yeah, the fan on the other one. And it was just like wasted. The motor was wasted. The bearings it was just like <laughs> like it didn't turn. So that fan wasn't kicking on. So if I was cruising down the road or down the highway, it'd be fine because I get the airflow. The temperature would drop. But as soon as you sat in traffic, the one fan wasn't enough to cool the engine down, you know? Yeah. So, I uh, I had a question. Um, for my Gen Hemi, do I need a tune to run a 180 stat? Because I know the one that I have is it's not a 180 stat, but I I, I know there's a, a a 180 stat. I guess it op it opens up at 180 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, do I need a, a a tune for that, or can I just uh throw it in there and hope for the best? No, well. Uh... So the, the purpose of a 180 and lower thermostat is that you can adjust timing for more power. So if you run the engine a little cooler, then you could advance timing a little bit, maybe run, uh, you know, higher octane fuel with more timing, right? Get a little bit more power out of it. Um, your ECM always, always monitors your coolant temperature. So in your, your tune, your timing tables, it knows, you know, how much timing advance and how much, you know, all the engine parameters should be at a certain engine coolant temperatures, the ECT temp. And you could optimize with a tune on a 180 stat, meaning you could probably get more power out of it a little bit, not, you know, copious amounts, but really just to bolt it in and go, the ECM is going to see, hey, it's just, it's, think of it as just riding around in winter all the time. Right. So it just mm. not, it's not going to get as hot. The ECM is always looking at the coolant temp. So 
it knows, hey, at this cool and temp, operate the engine this way. But mm -hmm. when you hear people say, hey, I need a tune with the 180 stat, what they're saying is to really take advantage of cooler engine temps, you would want to bump up the tune a little spicier is the way I like to describe it. Okay. Matt, Makes sense. Matt, what's up, buddy? No, you all right, buddy? Sleeping. All right. Oh no, I'm not dude. falling asleep. I'm like <laughs> melting it out here. <laughs> hey man, don't feel bad if you want to get out of that hot ass sauna that you're in. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it's like a sweat lodge in here. I mean, God. it's actually pretty hot in this room too. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, there's no breeze. It's eighty something degrees. Yeah, yeah. that Humidity's sounds like a thousand. <laughs> that well, sounds awful. Why don't you open you the make... garage door? Is it, huh? is it really hot outside? Speedos, huh? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I would be like 30 pounds lighter just due to blood loss from all the mosquitoes. <laughs> I had to change my name to Small Blocks Garage or something. <laughs> I thought I thought you said something about wearing Speedos. This was the first <laughs> Yeah, that don't get up, awesome. Matt. Just that is sit awesome. down. <laughs> sit down and do that. <laughs> no, nah, we're good, man. I'm, I'm wearing pants. All right. <laughs> hey, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that SEMA, somebody's got a room with Matt and Johnny. I think you just volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least he's not wearing the Daisy Duke, so. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's true. Chris. You, we, we all have the choice between Daisy Dukes and Speedos. Uh, yeah, you know. I got I got a banana hammock on under the Daisy Dukes, so we like to party. Okay, too much. I like too options. Far. I like That's options. Too far. <laughs> oh God, oh, Jesus! <laughs> We're a good time. <laughs> we are a good time. Absolutely, oh, guys. It's... I think I am cutting out for the afternoon. All right, man. Sounds yeah. good. Blake, yeah, thanks like, for joining us. It has been fun, man. It's always a good time with you guys. Absolutely. Tell Thanks. everyone where they can find your stuff, Blake. Uh, DIYHemi.com. You can find us on Instagram at DIYHemi, Facebook at DIYHemi, and that's about it. So give us a call, look us up. Uh, and you can find us on Talking Mopars most frequently. Yeah. <laughs> Keep tuning in to Talking Mopars. You can find us there. <laughs> Actually, before you before you go, Blake, let's do something really quick. It'll take two minutes. Okay, what's up? Um, I actually, I have this month's um, giveaway, mm -hmm. and I actually have the, I was going to do a separate video after uh, this podcast is done, but while we got people here, might as well just do, I don't want to start up a new video, so let's just run this wheel of names really quick, all right? Let's just see. Let's see who wins the gift. Okay. Let me just move this over here. All right. Can you guys see that? Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. I guess I'll show you guys the prize after. Let's click to spin everybody's name. I double checked to make sure everybody was there. Let's give the uh, the old wheel a spin for the giveaway for subscribers to the Talking Mopars podcast through Facebook. Everybody who's a subscriber, your names are on this wheel. And one of you lucky folks is going to win a little prize that I picked up. So let's give it a spin live. Oh, oh shit. Dang. Oh, Matt, that Matt was Ellis, close, man. Matt Ellis, you are the wiener. <laughs> and you win. Hold on a second, fellas. <clears throat> Stop sharing the screen here. And if I was that other name, I'd be contesting this right now. That was on the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's rough. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, this is the way it goes, man. I'd almost feel guilty winning. <laughs> this, uh, it's always I tough trying to. <laughs> It's it's tough to pick prizes because I want them to be Mopar related. And this one, I was actually going to get for myself, but I was like, oh, that'd be kind of a fun giveaway. So what we have here is actually a pack. So there are 
four tin signs for your man cave, all Mopar related. So you get that guy, this guy, bam. Nice. Nice. Old school. There you go. Yeah. Like it. And they're all a little patinaed, which I thought was cool. And then this guy right here. Yeah. Right You're on. either with us or behind us. So Matt, <laughs> I will get I will get your information. Um I'll be sharing this in the Mopar Hunters Association group so you can see that. Uh, for those of you that aren't a subscriber, um, if you're a subscriber to Talking Mopars on Facebook, every month we do a giveaway, and I do owe some bonus podcasts, and they are coming, I promise. So we will get those out. Blake, it was a pleasure having you on as always, buddy. Take care, and the office is looking. The office is looking good. I appreciate it, man. That's uh, I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. It's uh, it's not easy uh, keeping in touch when you got so much going on. I appreciate y'all guys being patient with me. I, well, we were getting ready. We were chatting behind your back, and I was like, "Are we gonna have to send a search party to Louisiana? Where's Blake? He's gone." <laughs> I was like, "Is he the motivational speaker yeah. of the group? We got we got to hang on for you." It's true. He finally ghosted us. He's gone. Uh, Blake's no, gone, and I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> fellas. Look, this it's been crazy. Just sitting here and talking with y'all has been amazing, dude. It's it's like just chilling out with your best friends, you know. It's always a good time, and. Yeah. Uh, well, we appreciate having you on, Blake, and we're going to do this All again. Right. I, I, I keep wanting to do this more and more, but I actually had a couple of people reach out and go, hey, love the lives, but we need the old school talking Mopars back. And I was like, all right. So I actually upped, uh, for those of you that don't know, I upped the plan so that I can actually put out more content so I'm not limited to a certain amount of storage on my podcast host. So now I just need to find, now I just need to find the time and figure out, I'm thinking I'm going to uh, release a lot more short form episodes too, just to keep the content rolling. So it'll be a good time, but Blake, we'll let you go for tonight. Enjoy, enjoy good, your man. evening and enjoy your weekend, buddy. And we'll see you next time. Peace out, fellas. Y'all have a good one, man. Later, brother. Hey, Blake. And then there okay, were four. I'm, I'm next because <laughs> AC is calling my name. All right, oh, Matt, tell, tell everybody where they can find you, buddy. You can find us on Big Box Garage on Instagram, Facebook, Pod Page, TikTok. I mean, we're everywhere. YouTube, um, Big Box Garage, Matt Fro Monroe. We kind of gotten a little sketchy with getting episodes out, and I apologize for that, but... Uh, the other two guys have been working their new job, so they've been a little hectic. Their schedule's been hectic, but we're get we're starting to get our groove back, so we're going to start putting out more episodes soon. So, ten four, ten four. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Everybody, go check out Mad from Monroe on Big Blocks Garage wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, Thank Matt. You. Good night, guys. Thank you. We'll see you later, buddy. Hey, man. See you, Johnny. And then there were three. <laughs> oh. Johnny, you bailing on us too, or what? No, I'm good. I mean, All right, I was, buddy. I'm surprised it's been two hours. It's, yeah, it's been two hours. It went by quick. Yeah, it's always tough. I feel bad getting the getting the homies from back east. <laughs> I say back yeah. east. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're they're <laughs> yeah, out there. They're on late. Them. Irvin, he's you're in Florida. No, I'm in California, Cali. You're in Cali. Why did I think you were in Florida? What the hell? Shit. <laughs> where where at in California are you? I need your address. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, I'm in Johnny? County. Where's that? Uh, you're what? You Riverside County? Yeah, Riverside. No, I'm in Ventura County. I'm way a little, not way north, but I want to say about a, two hours north from you. Yeah, okay. you're in. You're yeah. like in LA. I mean, you're. Uh, no, uh, not in LA. I'm like an hour north from LA. Ventura is that? Is that where Magic Mountain is? Or Magic Mountain is in uh, Valencia. Oh, that's right. Yep. Valencia. Yeah. So I'm I'm west from Magic Mountain, which is I wanna say maybe a go forty minute drive from there. Okay. Ah, it's it's uh it's a small I mean not a s I wanna say small, but it's Oxnard, it's by the beach. Okay. I know where you're at now. I know Oxnard. I've been up that way before. Yeah. Old job. Just like a one day trip thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool out there. It's kind of it's kinda of trippy. Because you're, you're, it, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it suck? I mean, it, it's like, yeah. it's weird. It's just like, uh, I don't know from where I come from because it's, it's more populated now, but 
back in the day, it was kind of, we were kind of rural. So like to get there, you're kind of like going through a lot of the LA type shit, you know, there's high density, lots of people. And then you're like, wow, just on the other side, it's, it's, it's more desolate, I guess, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't even remember what I went up there for it was like I had to go pick something up or something it was like a day trip they were like hey do you feel like driving up there to go grab something and I'm like hell yeah you're gonna pay me and I'll just drive all day fuck yeah I'm on it <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty uh pretty popular here it's, it's getting actually too popular if, if you ask me um but the car scene here is pretty popular um we are Oxnard is the middle of uh Ventura County. So we have people from coming from Thousand Oaks, Ventura. We have people coming from Santa Barbara and stuff like that, coming to the car meets. Uh the Mopar scene here is pretty big. Um, but you'll see a lot of modern Mopar. So you see a lot yeah. of new chargers, a lot of challengers here. Um I, I you don't see classics. You I mean you don't see, you know, early seventies or late sixties uh Mopars here at all. To be honest yeah. with you, it's kind of the same here. We there's like a my wife and I we go to this uh, Mexican restaurant for breakfast some like I think it's on some Sundays, and we go there and the parking lot is huge. There's a AAA there and there's a like a detail shop that hosts it, and the whole freaking parking lot is just full of cars and it's. I mean, it's a bit. There's a big Mopar footprint, but they're all moderns. They're all new gen stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just like it's like Hellcat, Hellcat, Scat Pack, Scat Pack, Hellcat. You know, it's like fuck. Where do you guys get your money? You know, for these <laughs> things, they're all kids too. It's like what the hell, you know? Uh, but then and, then and then there's like you know, um, shit. What is the name of that sports car? The really expensive one. Um, I, I don't know. McLaren. There's like a McLaren wow. and Ferrari and Lamborghini. I guess the right one. Holy shit. Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> wow. Vipers. There's been like at least three Vipers I've seen there. And then there was one Cuda big block, like a 60, like A body, like a 67 or 68. Nice. That was pretty cool. So one old school oh. on one of the times that we went there. But yeah, I, I mean, like my the Mopar Club, a, a group of us put together a Mopar Club, and it's like it's it's like three cars running, you know. <laughs> and there's like, <laughs> well, like one of the guys, one of the guys in the club, he's got like a '73 Challenger, and then his son has a '72 Dart, and then his wife has a like a. I don't know, 2019 or 2020 charger. And then the son's girlfriend has an older charger, uh, like the, the first gen of the newer one. I, I think maybe it's a little newer than that, but, uh, it's like, fuck that, that one guy, like his whole family makes Keeping up like, family. you know, 75% or 80% <laughs> of the whole club. <laughs> uh, <that was> funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like a few other guys in there, but like, their cars under construction or whatever they're not their shit's not running and driving you know <laughs> but, well uh, uh, believe it or not a lot of folks here view my charger my my, my charger is 2007 they view that as an old mobile <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm driving around like I'm one of you guys. Like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> You're the guy with the classic, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm wondering. I'm I'm driving around, and all these guys are just like you know turning their backs on me. Like, ah, this guy's a he's not one of us. I'm wow. Like, oh, I just want to fit in, but okay. I mean, <laughs> I guess. But uh, I, it does seem like everybody and their mom has a freaking Dodge Charger, Dodge Challenger, you know, like 2015 and up. Everyone has one around here. And especially those GTs and the SXTs now that they're looking a lot similar to the RTs, you can't tell them apart anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, you don't know, you don't even know what you run into, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously, at once you, you know, catch them at a light and you take off on them and you realize, oh, it's a mistake. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, you, it's hard to tell nowadays. The uh, Challengers and the uh, Chargers, I'm telling you, man, they look a lot alike now. All the features and stuff like that. I'm, what I'm talking oh, yeah. about is just the, the 40 look. They just look the same. Yeah. Yeah, literally my, my buddy, his 
girlfriend, him and his girlfriend just bought a GT and he came over and showed it to me literally not this last weekend, but the weekend before. And uh, he was like, yeah, we were looking at the X S X T, but it, it's just all like plain Jane. It doesn't have any cool coolness to it. And, and he had the GT and it was like the bigger wheels. It had the, the scooped hood had a mm-hmm. wing on the back. I mean, the thing looked, it looked killer, you know, it looked badass. It was like, I don't why would you buy the SXT? It just looks <laughs> dorky compared to the, the GT. But you know, the GT looked like I mean, if you had a scat pack, I'm sure you could tell the difference. But you know, it's like a lot of the cues that make it a high performance car. And it the freaking V six is it's pumping out some horsepower. The thing's not three hundred horse. It's not a slouch. Yeah, it's not a slouch. It's like the thing boogies, man. No, yeah. it, 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 and, and the, that eight-speed transmission, no joke. Yeah, That's I had cool. no problems. I had no problems with the uh, when I got rear-ended in my truck, um, in my daily driver, uh, and I went to the rental place and I rented that SXT Challenger. I had a great time. Those things are fun. You know, yeah. I was like, gosh, you can pick them up for twenty grand, get thirty miles to the gallon or high twenties. God, I mean, you can't not beat that, for, and have have yeah, something that looks cool. Daily, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was driving, when I was trying to buy a scat pack, I was driving them around and I was just like, I'm never really, I mean, they're fun. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But I'm like, I'm really never going to use all the power this thing has. You know what I mean? Why not save 20 grand and go get a <laughs> SXT and just cruise it around? You know what I mean? But I couldn't do that to myself because I, I, I would regret it. I know it. <laughs> you know, I see, see this. I see no things per charge. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the V6s? Yeah, I've seen them. Uh, there's a pro charger kit, right, for oh wow, uh, uh, for the new price. Yeah, this I, is a pretty, yeah, okay, huh? I wonder how much power they put out and how reliable it is. I want to say there were some videos that I saw that I've seen, and it was a hundred horsepower gain. No shit. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's but pretty good. We're talking about internals as well. You know, it's oh, not sure. just. It's not just oh, you slap on a supercharger, <laughs> uh, hundred horsepower. No, no, no. Yeah. No. Um, it, it 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 barely has enough uh pow for uh to to compete against the RT. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, Big Red says know, ripped supercharger will put four fifty to the wheels. That's crazy for a V six. <laughs> I, I think I have heard of Rip Superchargers. Now that I think about it, I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't know they put out 450 horsepower. That's pretty impressive. Um, but I have heard of Rip Superchargers. Yeah. Um, crazy. I guess, you know, if you get a V6 and you regret it and you're like, oh, I'm stuck in the payment. I don't want to lose my ass. I guess I'll just invest some money. <laughs> oh, gosh. Man, and still be less than a scat pack, though. Oh, you still got less power than a scat pack. That's kind of a bummer. You know what I would do if I had, if I did win the lottery and it, doing stupid things i'd be the guy that would buy the hellcat and the sxt and i take all the trim off the S- sxt and put it on the hellcat and make it look like a sleeper right <laughs> that would be the car i drove that would be me <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um yeah i the amount of money you could save buying the v6 is enough where it's tempting because I'm like, I could go get it. I've seen prices on brand new uh, SXTs and GTs for under 35,000, which, you know, I was looking at used scat packs with, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 miles for 30 grand. I mean, they're expensive up here. Now, if you live, I don't know how it is in California, but I've looked, I was looking at prices down in the Southwest, like Texas, you can get Hellcats for less than 50 grand which, you know, it's kind of hard wow. to do up here. Uh, I saw one because I, I did a search for the cheapest Hellcat I could find. And I think it was like just over 40, but it had like almost 100,000 miles on it. And there's something about a 100,000 mile Hellcat where I'm like, eh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's probably it was road probably hard, put away wet. Beat to hell, dude, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, crazy. So, Irvin, what's the plan? Are you going you gonna to keep the Charger and uh get it built or what what are you gonna do well to be honest with you dude after it breaking down this week in which i predicted remember i don't know if you remember i told you that i was looking at a, a trade-in for a yeah. challenge in march mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. april um 
I'm totally regretting not trading it in. Yeah. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. now I'm investing more money into it. And the more sure. money I invest to it, it kind of just makes me want to just keep it. Yeah. If I'm keeping it. And this is why I wanted to come on here just to pretty much get an input um, from you guys. So I wanted to see, um, obviously, the, it's a pre-ego Hemi and it has potential. If I would keep it, I would go 392 stroke, stroke kit. Uh, just plain and simple. So a stroke kit. Um, but obviously, if I would trade it in or get rid of it and get a challenger, because I want a challenger uh, only because it's it, it's the only muscle car that I can think of that relates to its, you know, culture. It's just, it looks or it hasn't changed. Yeah. yeah, it hasn't changed. And yeah. uh, you can see the similarities just by looking at the front mm-hmm. and the rear. Yeah. And uh, so, but if I get a Challenger, I'm 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 not gonna I'm not gonna have money to mess around with that Challenger. I'm gonna be too busy paying it off. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. What do you have room? Do you have yard space to have two cars? Or, I mean, if your car's got problems now, if you just want it, say you want it out of it. I mean, what do you think you could get for it? Is it like fifteen hundred bucks? Is it three grand? I mean, what, what, is it more? I, you know, I don't know. Well, I, I, it only has a hundred and five. Uh, no, it has one hundred and seven thousand miles. Mm-hmm. And I see those around here going for I want to say five thousand dollars with engine problems with a lot more miles. Okay. So I think I can get five thousand if I just give her a quick fix. Uh, you know, don't. BS the 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 next uh buyer and just tell them yeah. straight up this is what I've done to it it has new heads it has the valve seat issue fixed rebuild block you know but I I I'm not gonna sell someone a lemon obviously I want to make sure yeah. it runs great before I get rid of it so five thousand I think that's what I would be able to sell it for well I mean five grand's a that's a nice chunk of money to go towards a challenger if you really wanted a challenger you know if you if you'd said the car was worth 1500 bucks i'd say you know it's not going to make that big of a dent in a challenger purchase i would just like shoehorn it push it aside make it your hot rod you can do whatever you want to down the road or whatever but you know if you can get five grand out of it that that's a pretty nice shot in the arm towards a challenger you know i'd probably lean that way you know if, if it were me if you really wanted a challenger that is you know if you're cool with the charger and you got it all fixed and shit you know but i don't know you got to go after what you want i mean that's sounds to that's me like you want a challenger dude sounds to yeah, me like you want a challenger it's kind of what i'm hearing yeah no well and not only that i i, I talked to the mistress I, I i even told her like hey what if i keep the charger and just you know make sure i you know restore it make it a daily make sure it runs solid obviously you know a 2007 with the years i um, mean the mileage that it has you 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 don't know what to predict anything can happen sure. the next thing goes out is uh the the transmission who knows you know knock on wood right mm-hmm. right. But, right um i mean I've, I've been seeing some some challengers and I, i'm not talking about modern challengers i'm talking about i've seen a, a 1973 challenger and i'm just like and it, it was only 28 grand and i'm just like uh it would be nice to you know if, if my charger would you know keep it together i would have space and time for a, a classic mopar so yeah. But the the only approval I got from the warden is I got to make sure this thing doesn't break down. And I'm just like, that's kind of hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so does your I wife get, have I her own car? Her. Yeah, she has her own car. Okay. All right. So, you know, it's not bad having a backup car. If the charger was – if you got a new Challenger, kept the charger, and just, you know, you had two cars, backup car, whatever – Nothing wrong with that. If it's well, going to be your main of, daily, I got rid of my Dodge Magnum um, last month. I had a Dodge Magnum as the third car, and it was just sitting there. And I got I got rid of it for, for pretty cheap, actually. Oh, okay. And, Let me ask uh, you I regret it now. 
Let me ask right. you something a little personal in in a effort to get you something really cool. Would you say you have good credit or excellent credit or is it bad credit without nah, getting specific? I want to say decent. Nah, decent not credit? Good or bad credit. You may want to – so here's an option. You could keep the, cha- or the charger. You keep your charger, fix it, get it reliable, and then instead of – going out and buying a new challenger you could there are some really nice i mean if you're looking for an investment and you want a classic there's um a couple different credit places banks that will give you long-term loans for classic cars so you can get 96 month terms 120 month terms so you could be looking at a forty thousand dollar 1970 challenger or whatever and be paying you know less money per month than you would on a newer challenger if you wanted to go the classic route and keep your charger and have something modern and reliable that you could still put some money into if you wanted to you know what i mean and then you have your classic and with the amount of money you'd be buying the classic for you could probably find one that's a great driver you know maybe not a concourse restoration but one that's clean drivable it's probably got a, a decent older restoration on it probably get something for 35 or 40 grand which is less than a a new challenger, you know what I mean? And then you got something that won't lose, lose any money, you know, yeah, if you, if you buy the right one. You know, yeah. I've, I've had this conversation with Bob, my buddy Bob a few times. And the, the nice thing about an old car, let's just say you decide it, you know, and it, it kind of sucks, but let's just say you decide to go for it. You have this old challenger, you're loving it. And then you decide financially it was the wrong decision and you need to get out of it and you need to sell it. There's a good chance, depending on how long you've had it, you'll at least get your money back on the car. And you, if it's been a few years, you'll probably make more money on the car. But if you bought, mm-hmm. like, say, a newer Challenger right now, and then you decided that was a bad financial decision, you're definitely going to lose your ass on that car. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be selling it for less than what you paid for it. If you're lucky, you'll you'll get what you owe for you owe on it. You know, but right, um, it it's it's got a nice golden parachute you know if you got to jump out of it you can get out of it pretty easily i think you know i agree yeah Uh, yeah. it's i I, hey man i'm only 30 years old i still got time um the only only time i I remember saying that at 30 (laughs) (laughs) oh man i I don't even know how to feel about that (laughs) just goes like that I've only got six years on you, dude, and it was like a blink of an eye when I was 30. God, I wish I could uh, – if I could get that time back, man. God. And I, I'm still young. I talk to some guys that are older than me, and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're not old. And I'm like, I'm feeling pretty old. So <laughs> when you're uh, – what, what do they say? Uh, when, you're, when you turn 30, your check knees light turns on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man, I would uh, – if it was me – I, I would look into see if you could get approved for that classic loan. And if you were willing to, like a lot of people, uh, they hear anything over a three or four year loan and they're like, screw that. You know what I mean? Me, if I really wanted a car bad enough and I had to pay for it for 10 years, like Johnny was saying, if you had to get out of it, you could probably at least break even, depending on how long you held on to it. If you hold on to it for a few years, you may make some money, <laughs> you know, maybe only a few grand, but. Right. Um, and you never know who's going to stop you at a gas station. You just bought your, you know, $40,000, 70 challenger. And somebody goes, damn, I love that car. I had one just like it in high school. You want to sell it? And you're like, ah, you know, everything has a price. And they go, oh, well, what would you sell it for? And you say 45,000 right now. And they go, shit, really? And you go, yeah, just pocket five grand. There you go. And then the system starts all over again. But I don't know. I The new cars are awesome. But as far as resale value, there's millions of them. You can get one whenever you want. You know what I mean? Right. Nice. So, especially if you already have a daily driver. If you got a daily driver, you know, and I know you want a classic, Irvin. I know you do. Nah. Um, but that's just that's a decision. That's a personal decision. But if it was me, I would pro- I would at least look into financially if I could swing a classic. Um. But then again, there's something nice to be said about just having a nice a scat pack or even an RT with almost 400 horsepower. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a fun car. I mean, you know, little things you could do to it. And then eventually, you know, if you wanted to get crazy with it, you could. But I don't know. You got a lot of options, dude. 
I would I would think long and hard about that because you definitely don't want any regrets. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, uh, Chris, what are you gonna do next? What do you mean? Uh, as in, uh, I know. Uh, well, previously you mentioned uh, looking into buying the scat back, and then you mentioned you're a big fan of the Dodge uh, SRT10. Um, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know, I'm like, what's going on here, brother? <laughs> well. I have, I made a very bad financial decision when I bought the truck that I have because I traded in my 01 Ram with the Cummins. I missed that truck. God, it was so stupid. I had a 2001 black short bed Ram 2500 with a Cummins and I just put $4,000 worth of transmission work on it and needed an injection pump, new injector, new injectors and a new lift pump. Um, and that was just preventative maintenance because it had... Uh, about 160,000 miles on it. So it was just, it wasn't even broken in yet. You know what I mean? And right. I told my wife, you know, cause she's like, well, how much money do you need to get this truck where you want it? And I was like, well, where I want it. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's a little bit, you know, we can go many different directions, but what I need it to have right now for peace of mind is the fuel system upgraded. And I priced it all out and it was like four grand. And she about lost it. She's like, we just put $4,000 into a transmission, which isn't necessarily true because I buy all used cars with a service warranty. So uh, the service contract that I had, I only paid a hundred bucks and had uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I paid the deductible and a little bit extra to get some billet parts in the transmission. But uh, I pretty much got away with it scot-free. So I was like, we really didn't spend four grand. You know what I mean? Um but uh, she gave me the option. She goes, you can do that to the old truck, the 2001 that's 20 years old or almost 20 years old, or you can go buy a newer truck. And I was like, Ooh, and uh, I chase shiny objects all the time. So I was like, all right, well, let's go look at new trucks. And I was looking, looking, and then uh, I was about to walk away. And then I saw that truck that I have now. And I just really liked the color because I never see it. And I bought it. And unfortunately, I still owed some money on my 01, so I rolled it over. So now I'm stuck in this truck. If, and trying to get rid of it, I was going to lose about high end four grand. I was going to lose it right out of pocket. I had to roll that over into a scat pack. So I was like, okay, do I want to do another stupid move or do I just want to pay this truck off and just have the truck and decide later on whether or not I want to trade it in and lower the payment on the next vehicle? Um, Cause I like having a truck that I can actually use for work stuff. I wouldn't want to really put too much in Mr. Norm. Although I would like, if I had to move something, I'd throw something in the back of Norm. No problem. But, uh, I, uh, with the next vehicle I get, I, I keep bouncing back and forth because if I pay off the truck, the reason why I was limited to a scat pack was cause I really couldn't afford, you know, the extra 4,000 on top. If I rolled it over, it would bring my payment up into almost Hellcat territory. And I was talking to my wife, and I was like, if I wait and I pay off the truck, how feasible would it be if I went and wanted something crazier like a Hellcat? And I told her the numbers and stuff. And she was like, I mean, if you paid off your truck, you know, and I think I have two years left on it, then I'll have enough money left over where I could uh, I could probably financially swing a Hellcat Charger or Challenger. And if I, I really wanted a Challenger. And I've always wanted a Challenger more than a Charger. And the reason why I was leaning towards a Charger was because it was four doors. I have a family. I have a kid, possibly another one sometime soon. And I was like, oh, the four door would be a lot easier. But if I keep my truck, then I will have a four door and I can get a Challenger. And I was like doing the math in my head. I was like, okay, in a few years, the 15, 16, 17 Hellcats will probably be even more affordable for me. So I was like, gosh. I I would love to just have a Hellcat and I, I really wouldn't do much to it. I would just have a, a Hellcat just to drive because I got my old stuff that I like to tinker with. But then there's the SRT 10s. You know, I had Jovita on the podcast and she was hinting that she was going to be looking at SRT 10 and less than a week later, she buys one. And I'm like, did you have that planned? And she's like, no, it just popped up for sale. I was like, man, she's got some cool shit. I'll tell you that. Um, that, that SRT 10, she's got, it's a yellow jacket edition. It's, it's badass, And I'm not really a fan of yellow, but it looks good on that truck. Um, and I, I love them. God, I would love a single cab, six speed SRT 10 black. Oh God, I would love to have that. But as the practicality of it is like, eh, it's, you know, even a Hellcat challenger, the practicality 
I would be trying to justify it. But because I have the four door truck, it wouldn't matter because it was always, can I get a car seat or two, you know, in the back of a challenger that could be, that could be a challenge, but I've heard you can. No, you can. There's there's a video on YouTube right now that shows uh, someone uh, doing a little review of, you know, fitting car seats behind uh, Mm -hmm. on the back of a challenger. And he put three, car seats in the back no you gotta look it up i am not making this up i use that stupid video as an excuse (laughs) i was like you see you see (laughs) we could we we could we could do this you know but of course but you gotta look it up it's not it's funny uh i think the guy that was doing the video of the review he's six feet tall so really yeah, he was able to sit in the passenger and driver and put the seat, adjust the seat to, you know, his fitting. And they put three seats in the back. So there's, there's, it's three, it's just three seats back there. It's not just two. You know, it's not like the Mustang and the Camaro. There is some feet um, room. It might be a little, you know, yeah, tight, but not compare, not comparable to the Mustang or the Camaro. But you gotta look at it. You gotta look at, look for it you know, yourself. So, so, so you can believe it, but I looked it up and sure enough, man, it's three seats back there that three car seats can fit back there. I'm just, I was I, like, I believe the seats, I believe the seats could fit back there. The question is getting the kid out of the damn thing and in it, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that could be a tough one. You'd probably have to go. If you only had one kid, then you'd have to just go in on the other side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, uh, the, the safest, the safest uh, place to uh, place a, a car seat would be in the middle. So, of course, you have to, you know, put that seat up and then reach into the middle. You know, obviously, it's not going to be right next to. So, you have yeah. a, a larger. I guess, uh, yeah, you're right. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Uh, that's something for me to think about. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is I, I've, I've got a couple years to think about it. There you have it, my friends. Another episode of Talking Mopars is in the books. For everything you need to know about the podcast, please visit TalkingMopars.com. And don't forget that you can send me your Mopar stories, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, and everything else on your Mopar addicted mind to Chris at TalkingMopars.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail on my voicemail box at 209-28-MOPAR and I will play your message on the show. Also, if you enjoy this show, you like listening to me every week, and you'd like to show your support and keep the wheels turning here on Talking Mopars, there are a couple of ways you can do it. One way is by picking up some Talking Mopars merch at the Talking Mopars merch shop, which you can find on TalkingMopars.com or by becoming a supporter through my Facebook page. You can find me on social media by searching for at Talking Mopars Podcast, and be sure to subscribe to my new YouTube channel by searching for Talking Mopars Podcast. That's it, my friends. Until we talk again, I am your host, Chris Albrecht, and that was Talking Mopars. Thank you for listening to Talking Mopars, your direct connection to all things Mopar. Until next time, remember, no Mopar left behind.